What's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about all the FUD circling Coinbase and there is a lot of FUD circling Coinbase. I actually made a video about Coinbase last week, but I feel like so much has happened since then that it might be worth diving into it one more time here um, based on the volatility. So let's go to the trading screen right now and see what's going on. And this is, this is one of those articles that is circling around creating a lot of FUD around Coinbase. One of those classic articles. Um, so Coinbase earnings were bad. Yeah, we all know that. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. We're still, the crypto exchange is now warning that bankruptcy could wipe out user funds. That sounds really horrible. When I first read that, I was like, what's going on, bankruptcy? Because when you start seeing bankruptcy, and you know, disclaimer, I am a shareholder in Coinbase. I do own, own Coinbase. I've had, I've documented several trades. I do share them obviously all with you guys. You guys can check them out on my profile or my portfolio, which is linked right over there. You guys will see it. So I'm trying to be very, very transparent about all my positions in Coinbase. Now I closed my initial position, waited a couple of months, and I started rebuying my Coinbase position. So that's you know disclosure. But now as a shareholder, I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on? Bankruptcy, that sounds really, really bad. It's actually not nearly as bad as you think, but it is worth talking about really quickly here just to clear up some of the FUD. So if you come down here, scroll, 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 um, good little synapses right here. Coinbase said in its earnings report Tuesday that it holds 256 billion in both fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies on behalf of its customers. So users go to Coinbase, they deposit it, so on and so forth, boom. Yet the exchange noted that in the event it ever declared bankruptcy, the crypto assets we hold in custody on behalf of our customers could be subject to bankruptcy proceedings. Coinbase users could become general unsecured creditors, meaning they have no right to claim any specific property from the exchanges and proceedings. Their funds would become inaccessible. And where's that? Bank bankruptcy proceedings. So people who get paid first in bankruptcy proceedings is debt. Anyone who ha has given um, Coinbase debt basically gave them a loan, will be the first to get their money back. So your funds will quote unquote be used to pay back um, the debt of Coinbase more or less. Um, that, this is a bit of a different topic, but yeah, that's basically what's coming out. That's what's freaking a lot of people out. Totally makes sense. Um, but let's just recap here a little, a little further. Um, good little synapses again. In the comments shared on Twitter, Coinbase CEO and founder Brian Armstrong said the exchange had no risk of bankruptcy. Um, Definitely, there is definitely no risk of bankruptcy at this moment. Who knows what's gonna happen in the future, but at this moment, there's not. And the disclosure was made due to new, this is the important part. The disclosure was made due to new rules set by the US um, SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission regarding public companies that hold crypto assets on behalf of others. So basically the SEC just said, you have to make this a disclosure, let people know. This is something that everyone probably should have already known. It's not really new news, right? Uh, if, it can, if, a, if a crypto exchange goes bust, boom, you lose your cryptocurrency if it's deposited there. That's why we've been talking about this for years. That's why you, t you wanna have control of your own private keys. You don't have your control of your own private keys on Coinbase and many other exchanges. And if you don't, you don't own the cryptocurrency. It's that easy. It's something we've been talking about since the beginning of time is what it feels like. Um, now, it's so it's different than a bank, and the bank has the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, which you see on every bank. You know, if you ever go to the bank teller and they have this little FDIC little pamphlet right there on the desk, basically it means when you deposit your money, um, you are secured up to $250,000. Um, so if you deposit 500 or a million or whatever dollars in your bank and the bank goes bust, at least the government guarantees you will get $250,000 back no matter what. And that is to save against bank runs. Cryptocurrency or yeah, crypto industry doesn't really have that kind of regulation. Who knows? Maybe it will at one point because some catastrophe happens. So just just let's let's take note of that. Now, now what's going on with Coinbase? Because this ticker is whoo, getting its butt kicked. It is devastating. I don't even like looking at it. And mind you, this is a weekly chart just to zoom out and and almost reduce the red because it, it, it is rough. Um, this ticker, let's see here, draw, let's see, it's down quite a bit. Um, let's use this, it is down from the highs about 86, no, 88, almost 90%, which is pretty heavy. Mind you, it's not unheard of right now in the overall markets, even something as credible as, let's say, Snow, Snowflake, a very credible company, is down um, quite a lot from their all-time highs, you know, around 70, 70%. So just mind you, everything is selling off right now. Yeah, crypto is selling off, or Coinbase is selling off a little bit more aggressively. But again, that is because, look at this chart, 
quickly. Let's let's see what we could find here. So big sell off. We had a bit of a um, bear flag coming in here, or if you want to call it. Um, you could see big resistance coming in. Floor broke the floor, continued the the sell off, and you know classic. Now let's look at the Bitcoin really quickly. Boom, similar situation. So we had a big bear flag here or a big sell off. Um, let's see, this is more of a channel right here. We broke the channel to the downside. You know, very classic setup. You know, we're seeing this across the board with cryptocurrency. I'm just using Bitcoin right now. So, okay, we have Bitcoin, we have the market, we have Coinbase, we have tech selling off quite aggressively. Boom. All right, nothing really new there. Um, so let's think, is Coinbase going bankrupt? Well, Brian Armstrong says no, he's the CEO, so he's probably biased. So let's look into the financials a little bit more. And one of the places I like to do it is on Simply Wall Street. Now the problem with Simply Wall Street that I have found is sometimes, look at this, updated May, May 10th. And today, does it say anywhere here? Let's go and so you guys see the date. Today is May 11th, so it doesn't always update very quickly. So. Um, Simply Wall Street, if you could update a little quicker, that would be phenomenal. I do like Simply Wall Street though, and look at this. Um, so they have this, I'm not even really sure what this thing is called. I, uh, let's see, I used to know what it was called. It's just not coming to me at the moment. Um, but anyway, this analysis is putting pretty much all of the weight on health. And the reason for that, and yeah, this is not updated, but I don't think it's gonna change so much because I already went through the financials and they haven't changed so much. There's there's some trend changes, but overall the, the general numbers are, are a little bit similar. So health right here, it, it's, it's still very healthy. So let's actually click on this for a, sec a second, scroll down here, so reducing that, they need to definitely reduce that a little bit, but let's go down here. They are sitting on a pile of cash. Literally, they are sitting on a pile of cash. Cru um, <laughs> Coinbase is nowhere near bankruptcy because their liabilities are just so, so low. Mind you, this is before the analyst came out, the um, new new report. So let's actually go to the new report, see what difference it is. And trust me, it's not that different. Um, let's see, so we have this one, and then if we go all the way down, we'll actually see this new report, and actually we have the same thing over here. And I got this on the sec.gov. So you can go to sec.gov, type in uh, coin, and you'll find it. I always like to type it in right here, so for example, type in coin, search, scroll out, say view filings, and you'll see all the filings. So we're looking pretty much at the 10Q right now, and um, yeah, that's it. So let's get out of that and quickly scroll down, look at their assets. So the assets, again, they haven't really changed so much. Yes, they have gone down um, from the previous quarter, but like we've learned, everything has gone down the previous quarter, and Coinbase is investing heavily, very heavily, on all their other products, including institutional trading, becoming the AWS of Web 3.0, and making an NFT marketplace, which we could definitely debate because that has you know taken way longer than has expected. But anyway, they've been putting a lot of money to R&D, so their assets are going down a little bit, um, but they still have a ton. So these are the numbers you saw on Wall, simply Wall Street right here. These are the numbers um, from last quarter. So it's only a quarter. We're not you know this isn't like a year or something like that. And total assets, still very, very similar. Not so much of a drop there. <laughs> My girlfriend's on a call and she has a cake in the oven, so I just had to solve that issue. Sorry about that, let's get back into it. Okay, so we know the assets haven't really changed so much. So what is the big problem right now of why the earnings were so destroyed here on Coinbase? Why did they get so wrecked? Let's actually go to the daily and look at this. I mean, it is pretty bad. So we had this huge sell-off here and then earnings came out at like 4.30. So at half an hour after the market closed, earnings came out and they fell like another 20% instantly. At least at this point, they're holding, they're holding their lows all day. They haven't really went lower than pre-market, but they're getting pretty close to it at the moment. Um, and volume is spiking here. So maybe this is the ultimate capitulation. Who knows? This is just, you know, pure speculation, but um, at least they're holding and they're not dipping any lower. Well, mind you, by the time I upload this video, watch, who knows where they're going to be. Um, I'm, I'm so used to Coinbase being down 10, 20% every day. I've almost... Uh, just accepted any number I see. I mean, <laughs> today they're down 27%. So, okay, I should increase that range a little bit. Um, so what was the panic here with the earnings? Well, let's go to the um, actual statement here. Um, and this is the shareholder letter that comes with the 10Q 
um, that was reported on the SEC. And I actually want to start off here. It gets a little blurry, but let me zoom in here. And I just want to start off by reading this a little bit because I think this puts uh, things in perspective. Um, the first quarter of 2022 continued a trend of both lower crypto asset prices and volatility that began in late 2021. Okay, so we know we're definitely in a, a bear market uh, at the moment, at least the markets are. Um, regardless of what the Fed says. These market conditions directly impact our Q1 results, but we entered these market conditions with foresight and preparation and remain as excited about the future of crypto. To quote our prospectus filed a year ago, you can expect volatility in our financials given the price cycles of cryptocurrency industry, uh, industry right? There's crypto winters, crypto springs, or crypto summers is what I should say so on and so forth. This doesn't phase us because we're always taking a long-term perspective on crypto adoption, which I think you could probably debate this um, based on how they've been going about a few things, such as some of the coins they've been listing, a little bit skeptical uh, there. But I think there's a big reason for that and because their altcoins are most of their majority in terms of transaction costs. I think they're just trying to pump out a lot of altcoins at the moment, which makes sense. We may earn a profit when revenues are high and we may lose money when revenues are low, but our goal is to roughly operate the company at break even, smooth out over time for the time being. It totally makes sense. I mean, that's a nice optimistic thing to be saying. Um, now let's see here what the big problem is and why everyone's pooping the, the bed. Um, Oh, by the way, Coinbase just hit a new all-time low now at 51.86, so they broke their pre-market low. Um, anyway, uh, Q1 2020, that's this quarter. Look at this, they're actually down 430 in net income. So this is what has people really, really freaking out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a point of concern, but let's let's dive into this just a little bit more. And they do have really good articles kind of paced throughout these analysis. If you just go to their um, 10Q, it just is a little bit more specific and just like numbers, um, but this kind of explains the numbers a little bit more. Let's see, uh, highlighting here, meet high demand. I just want you guys to know Coinbase is the USA's biggest exchange. And a lot of US people aren't allowed on other platforms and it's really stressful, especially as a crypto investor myself, I've had issues always getting kicked off of other platforms. If it was Bitfinex, if it was, uh, was it Binance? If it was, you know, trying to sign up for F FTC. It's like, oh, being a US resident is such a flaw or like such a, you know, kick in the butt when it comes to crypto that it's just very, very frustrating. So Coinbase is the number one big exchange there and they work really closely with the government on regulations. That's why I really like uh, Coinbase as an investor because they have their fingers quite closely in with the government to try to figure things out and improve the regulation. Let's see, hiring here, 1,200 full-time employees. So they've been scaling quite aggressively in a fairly bearish time where capital is getting more expensive. They have tons of capital, but if you know push comes to shove, they could always reduce their expenses by cutting staff it's never really something any company wants to do but it is always a card in their back pocket so let's let's just keep that in mind um, so they've been growing quite aggressively um, let's scroll down here a little bit more ba -ba -bum, ba -bum. really good stuff look at this their nft marketplace which i'm excited for myself and this is a good one uh, trading volume and then trading volume based on uh, revenue look at this other crypto assets 52 so yeah, that's more than Bitcoin and Ethereum combined. That's why they're adding all those altcoins, which is you know a lot of skeptical um, views around how they're adding those altcoins. But I think that's pretty much the the number one reason. There's a lot of uh, conspiracy theories around it. I'm just you know purely off the numbers. Now this is what's really getting them. It's just the activity when it comes to trading. It's just going down a little bit. And everyone knows that Coinbase makes most of their money off of transaction commissions. Although that is being fixed quite um, rapidly as well. And to highlight that point, net revenue here, this really highlights it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, retail, institutional, so this is $1 billion right here. It's gone down in Q1, obviously, because trading in general in the crypto market has been going down. People have been withdrawing their crypto from the exchanges and doing other things with it, like peer-to-peer -peer lending and staking, stuff that you wanna do, especially in a bear market, where you plan to just hold for the next one to two years. So it definitely makes sense. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing much less crypto investing and trading while I'm, I'm investing, I'm buying, but I'm not actively managing it. I'm just into my staking accounts and so on and so forth. Um, but look at this, subscription services revenue. Look how this is in general increasing, right? Um, since 
last year this has gone up 3x so they've been really working on getting that money from different revenue streams and i think this is really important because even brian and coinbase they've mentioned in their pre uh, previous i think their perspective that they want to totally wean off of transactional revenue they plan on this going to zero so that was always part of the plan they're sitting on cash and they are expecting this to go to zero so they're planning ahead so i really don't think there's so much room for panic, although the market sure feels like it, which makes me want to panic, but I feel like it's not a good time to panic. Because even though capital right now is more expensive, Coinbase doesn't necessarily need capital unless they want to keep growing as aggressively as they've been growing, because they've been growing quite aggressively. And talking about growing quite aggressively, here's their operating expenses. This is where people are also freaking out. This has gone up quite a lot. I mean, it's more than doubled from a year ago, so that's really not something you'd want to be seeing. But again, it is a very quickly expanding company. And If you want to grow fast, you want to be number one. This is such a competitive space. It's like ridiculous. It's like it's like the, the, the movie streaming space right now with like Netflix and HBO Go and Peacock and Disney and Redbox just got acquired. So it's like, you know, that, that space is very competitive as well. Crypto space is getting competitive. I mean, with FTX and uh, Crypto.com and all these big companies, you guys saw it with the Super Bowl ads. They're just throwing money into the crypto market. They're all trying to become number one. They're all spending much more money than I feel like they should be spending. And I think there's a big bit of a reckoning that's gonna come. So their their expenses are going uh, through the roof and kind of looks like a lot of that is coming from their administration, but also a lot is coming from their tech and development. So this is really a place I feel like you'd wanna really keep an eye on. Marketing, you could always pump that down fairly uh, quickly. I like the fact that their transaction expense has gone down, but again, this is, this is very cyclical. But really, it's the technology and general administration. If they can get that back to what it was a year ago, I think things would pipe down very, very quickly in terms of stress. This company would instantly be profitable. So again, I'm not so worried uh, about it, at least from all the FUD I've been seeing. I mean, if, like everything I read or videos or like the headlines of titles, they're just like, ah, like you read them and you get a heart attack and then you look into it and you're like, it's not, I mean, it's not great, right? But the whole market isn't really that great. I think that's really the issues is the micro Mac, I mean, the macro concerns, not so much the micro, but the overall, you know, the market. Um, and I could be wrong, but that's that's how I feel about it. So let's keep scrolling here. See what some of their outlooks are. Um, let's see here. Trading volume, we believe trading volume will be lower in Q2 compared to Q1. So you could probably expect that to even go down further. We anticipate... We anticipate subscriptions and services revenue will be similar to modestly lower in Q2. That's probably because less people are trading, so they might reduce their subscription services and so on and so forth. That definitely makes sense. Transaction expenses obviously will go down. Here, they're still kind of aggressive with their marketing. So man, I, I would feel more comfortable if they maybe reduce that, but who knows? I'm not an insider, so I can't really comment on it. Um, tech and development plus general administration. This is something that's, you know, the big, you know, exclamation mark that has people freaking out. So let's see what they say. We expect these expenses to be in the range of 1.1 to 1.3 billion, including approximately 420 billion in SBC. Expenses will be driven primarily by tech and business support related headcount. So hmm, that's, it feels like it would be nicer if this was a reduced, but who knows? I'm sure there is a plan behind the madness. And you can kind of see here, this kind of goes with the bull uh, bull markets and bear markets in general. So this isn't great to see their average revenue per user going down. I'm not super stoked about that, but competition is getting fierce. Um, and that's a really, really big thing. And then down here, you have their balance sheet, income statement, cash flows, all nicely outlined as well, unless you want to go here to the more official one, which is which is pretty nice too. But I do like all the little comments they throw in there. So this is a really good synopsis here, guys. You know, their their net income, they are negative. They're hitting this negative quarter. So that's that's freaking a lot of people out. But overall, they're really throwing a lot of money into growing the company and from tech and administration. I think the administration side gets me a little bit nervous. I always get nervous when companies are very bloated. By far, that's 100% my biggest concern. But it is always one of those things. If you need to, you can just always kick, cut it back. No matter how much you don't want to do it, it is always an option. This company, if it wanted to, can get profitable, profitable really quickly. And since the overall market, the macro things are getting really, really bearish, they're probably going to want to do that. But at least they have enough cash in the bank to not have to do that anytime soon. So that makes me quite bullish on the company, especially at these prices. Who knows what's gonna happen? Maybe we're gonna go down another 50% from here. I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think I'm gonna be fear selling here based on what I'm seeing on their 10Q. 
I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Coinbase. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget, drop a like on the way out. And if you're totally new, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you part of the community. Like always, guys, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.